looking at the shelf <coughs> and trying to sort out the point and figures a little bit. Uh, you know, for the first move, I think, you know, it's a pretty good low. Now the question is, yeah. can we rally into midweek on earnings? Yeah, it's, and I, I have uh, no view for that. Uh, you know, I'm just looking at it top down and, uh, what, but what is interesting is that unlike the previous we moved, you know, and this one started Thursday, late Thursday, and, uh, and we got the follow through, of course, on Friday. Now we kind of sit down here. There's no spike really coming back. There's no power. I mean, these markets have been sitting here since probably two hours after uh, last night's opening. And that's, that includes, well, the metals actually performed exactly right because the gold is reading that the banks are going to stay, are going to use this for cover, so to speak, you know, to, to maintain the uh, the status quo. And uh, the commodity-based metals, meaning palladium, platinum, silver, copper especially, have all been under pressure and gold holds in anticipation of them turning it into a monetary event. So it's actually pretty, uh, markets are actually, I think, uh, looking at this and just really wondering, uh, this is gonna take time because we don't really understand and take out all the uh, sensationalism uh, because you know that's, the media thrives on this. And because then you you know, this is like running around with uh, a release of unemployment data every hour for them. You know, next one, next one, next one. Ne you know, and they'll keep running with whatever new data they get or whoever they talk to last. Uh, so, you know, you're gonna, you, we are gonna be with this for a while, but the markets are trying to sort out, of course, uh, what the economic impact of this is going to be, how so, you know, how long will it take for the uh, for the uh, economic response? What will be the economic response? And you're seeing it. And markets are actually pretty logical here in the way that they're looking at it, which is, hey, you know, what took it on the on the chin first? Of course, is the oil and the copper. I mean, the break in the copper is is breathtaking. When you really look at it, and and it's all based on the come, of course, because prior to this, we were starting to see the commodities and the commodity currencies, and as we've talked about, the emerging markets really start to get some uh, life to them. And wow, did they reverse quick! So they're seeing this as some real potential economic impact, and it's not to be minimized because there's this, there's a you know there's a there's a sustaining power to it. And that's because a lot of people, of course, were long and getting ready, you know, for a week, somewhat of a weakening dollar, which we started to see first play out in the emerging markets and, of course, with it, the commodities. So it's interesting action. Uh, Peter Bookvarage, interestingly, this morning put out a piece, and it was it was what I had been talking about. Uh, you know, John, I had sent you a couple of, I think, uh, chats, but... Uh, have getting to talk with my brother quite a bit um, over the last few days, and and Peter Bookmar asked the same. You know, he asked the same question: How many people have died in the U.S. of the flu this year? A lot more. Oh, thousands, and as they do every year, but this year, thousands. So again, you see these deaths, and we don't know enough about the people who died. What was the health that was in? You know, were they, were they uh, the infirm and weak? And that's why they died. You know, and I'm not making light of it. I'm just, I, what I'm offering is what my brother offers me. And I, and I love talking to my brother. It's just good science. Because rather than just uh, getting, uh, uh, and I know if Michael's listening, he'll disagree with me because he's in China and he's living right on the, uh, the front lines of it. But we don't know enough about any of this stuff. And so, you know, I, you see these moves that are certainly dramatic, 
but from a, a science and humanistic viewpoint, you, you, you don't know enough yet. You just have no, no idea, you know, because we don't have an analysis of the people. We don't even know how long it's been going on. So as all potential pan, pan, uh, pandemics, you need a lot more information to be able to sift through. So, you know, that, that's all I'm saying. And I, I'm trying to look at this uh, in, in that way, especially when I, you know, not, now let's return to what we do, which is the markets. And you have to admit that after last night's initial response, and, it, and, and we had a triple header, we had a trifecta last night, because of course we had more news out of China. We had the Italian elections, Judd, nice work on the BTBs, by the way, those were, that was outstanding. And whether you caught the long side or not, you sure that you sure shouldn't have been short. Oh yeah, and that, I mean, was, that was right. That's what that's what got me to take the short on Wednesday. In the yeah, SMPs. yeah, and it was. It, it, you sure shouldn't have been short, and that was a, a superb, superb piece of work. And then of course we had the uh, the embassy in Iraq, but that news was dwarfed, of course, by you know unfortunate for Kobe Bryant. So, I mean, it was an absolute insane night, but you did have a trifecta of major global macro news, uh, global macro news last night, which, uh, I, and really considering all the, the markets were really pretty well behaved. Uh, well, the, the, only thing is, was, the first low was easy to pick out um, I've got it up here. It was that that was a January seventh breakout or the eighth breakout yeah. on that ORH day. That ORH number was thirty two fifty four and a half. The first I, I went right there. I, yeah, I went right there to that day and looked at it myself last night, just to you know. Again, you got to put things in perspective. Where are we? And so, but we're not getting the bounce that we've been getting out of these things. Uh, you know, we had the gold rally, but the gold rally wasn't really that dynamic last night. Well, I thought it should have gone yeah. up to the 90s and it, you know, just kind of. Yeah. After yeah, I was looking fight, at. That was it. I was looking at that 1594. Um, so, uh, yeah, we couldn't even get up there. So that was interesting. I, I actually, I had been long and waiting and seeing and I got out, but now I'm trying to buy it back. Uh, Friday, I was able to buy it back late. I had left orders. I couldn't couldn't look or talk about the stuff anymore. So, but that was you know pure luck because the S and P's put in a little bit of a rally off that 1581. Or I'm sorry, 3281, 83 area. So and that uh, broke the goal a little bit. But I am kind of surprised that the euro is not stronger. So I'm watching this, but I. I think that's you know the uh, euro yen, euro Swiss. Every, uh, there's they want to sell the euro against it, but the I you know from from the perspective that we talked about last week, the Italian elections uh, really proved interesting because uh, Salvini really did not do well, and it was a big roll of the dice for him. I know he's not, I'm not saying he's done in any way, shape, or form, but it was not the um, outcome that he was expecting. And now, again, it, you know, I'm not, uh, yesterday or today's uh, FT has a, an, another very mediocre piece uh, from Wolfgang Bunchow talking about uh, the ECB getting away from its inflation targeting. Well, I actually wrote a response to it last, uh, last night when I read it. Uh, because what are you talking about inflation targeting anyway? The real discussion, the guard knows it. Draghi knew it. It's about the euro bond. If you're not willing to tackle this at this time, then the euro will never, will never sustain itself. And I know, and I apologize because I'm not, I've been away for two weeks, two and a half weeks, um, and I don't have access to send books out but everybody who's posted at uh, the rotten hotter Europe.com, 
I will get you your books. I promise you. I promise you. I'll, uh, I'll be in Chicago and I'll, I'll get several hundred copies and just send them out. I know Matt wants them. So you know, if you tell me just how many you want, because before I get rid of them, you can have your last chance at them. So, and you'll, you'll give me whatever you want for them. I don't care. I just want to get it in people's hands. Bernard has a new book coming out. This is going to be a mega story. I just can't tell you what, when, and of course, uh, <coughs> the political situation in the United States <coughs> is going to heat up. I think, uh, as we're hearing about, uh, some of the stuff now coming out of Washington and maybe some Republican senators are starting to get a little nervous and uh, we're, we're going into full full uh, political mode, which you know, we've been a little unattentive to. So these things are, are going to be out there. But again, the, Sal the Salvini loss makes, in, in my estimation, uh, Lagarde now has even more ability to push this. And for the life of me, if she delays here, time lost will be time lost. And she has to seize this moment. There is, there is no other alternative. I mean, you can look through this all you want. <laughs> the solution to, uh, to, to, their mag to the big problem about what to do with this is the euro bond euro bond because it'll come with fiscal harmonization and uh, a eu wide bank deposit insurance program, which is what they need. So she's got to seize the day, forget about the massive review. <clears throat> because if all they're going to talk about is inflation targeting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I find that uh, uh, really just again missing an opportunity, and she can't afford. They can't afford to miss this opportunity. So, Ira, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at the currencies, and I'm just wondering in the back of my head, is this just not a big carry trade going on here with the dollar in the box? Some, well, some of it is. Uh, but don't forget, U.S. rates are off, too. So, you know, there were some people on uh, Bloomberg this morning talking about it. And the ability, actually, you should start to get some dollar selling because it'll make, you'll be able to, uh, to put your hedges on again. So let, let's see what happens here. It's, it's really too early. And there's not, the carry trade is interesting. In, in my mind, there's not enough, if you don't, if you do it on the hedge and you buy dollars and you don't hedge it and the dollar starts to fall because the China situation gets worked out, the politics in the United States are, uh, -uh. uh the Fed's going to be on hold. I think all the central banks are, uh, we'll just have to see the way it works through. So, uh, all right. So, it, just so we got you in here. Before yeah. Wednesday, I mean, just let's get your thoughts on that. And then, because, you know, I think that, have you thought at all about what they might say in their statement on on, on Wednesday? Well, I, I'm, you know, there were, here's one of the things I'm looking for. There, there was, there's talk that they're going to raise the, uh, they're going to raise the deposit rate on the, uh, on the interest on overnight uh, excess reserves so that it would be closer to the repo rate and take away that, uh, that differential. Uh, that will be one of the areas I'm going to be watching for, because if they don't raise it, uh, I would view that as probably the, the most uh, quote-unquote dovish, dovish aspect of it. I mean, I, I don't know what they could possibly say. If they talk about the Chinese uh, virus, it'll be in a sense that, well, we don't know. It's a potential headwind. Um, it may be here. Here's what I, it may be transitory, but it is a potential headwind. And we're starting to, you know, and they have to be nervous what they've seen in the commodity markets. I mean, that's, that's a pretty devastating fall. So if you were to accept them as a barometer, you'd go, well, global growth is really set to slow. 
but it's so early. So they'll just say it's something else that they're going to watch, and they'll use it as as a reason, you know, to to stay the course and and not do anything. Which, okay, okay, nobody's really expecting them to do anything. Uh, will they talk about the standing repo? Uh, no, I doubt it. I doubt it. So I'm not really. I I, I don't. If I was him, I'd cancel the goddamn press conference. What are you gonna What, what are you gonna tell me? What are you gonna tell me? The market's already telling me. We're gonna be on watch. We're gonna be vigilant. What What are you gonna tell me? That I really haven't factored in already. So I'm not really expecting them. The Bank of England. I, I that's actually getting more discussion. Because what is the, uh, you know, people were thinking that they were going to cut rates, but now the last three data releases have been pretty good. So we've seen the pound pop, especially against the euro of everything. The euro is born to brunt as the Canadian dollar has, but the Canadian dollar makes sense because that's a commodity deal, you know, with oil. And we say it's, it's closely tied to the oil. Well, so, you're getting that in Canada. You're getting it in Aussie. Yeah. You, know, you got the whole, right. all the commodity right. currencies got smoked. Got smoked. And because people were getting long, as we saw. I mean, yeah. they did some pretty interesting technical work and then whew, all wiped out, you know, with the, uh, with the um, news of the, uh, of the virus. Uh, so that's, that's why that one's going to be... This may be one of the great opportunities, but it's so early because this is to, this does not have anything to do with economics in the period that we exist. This is economics in the future that the uh, that the coronavirus will prove to be longer lasting and really affect global growth. We just don't know, but the movements have been dramatic. Look at what oil has done, and the oil is totally off the fears of the economic impact. Less travel, less production. Uh, you know, the monthly they got all the monthly ORL stops. Uh, a, so as good as they looked ten days ago, it's how bad they look today. Yeah, and the quarterly which, stops are fifty ninety nine. Which, so, uh, which is why. Well, and it's why I never lock up with markets. It's a lesson for everybody. You say, you know, yeah. Trade with stops, you know, and know where your losses are because these things do develop. And you know what? In a world that's so globalized where people move or money flows, they move a lot faster and with more power than you can even imagine. Well, look and at just the crude you want. I mean, I'm the, sorry? The, the crude you want on yeah. the, is a total ORL month now. So they yeah. blow everybody out of that trade. Yeah, and to, look at the copper. We were at two eighty-five. I think seven trading days ago. Yeah, and we're just trading now. Kept asking me about it, and I said I thought copper was in a range, and I'm not touching it. Yeah, not, well, listen to a lot. The, the the one of the guys who I who I've talked to, you know, he had two eighty-eight. He closed above two eighty-eight. We couldn't get above that. So he was. He says, "Yeah, it looks great." You know, some guys had the two eighty-five, which I had was the two eighty-five area. Look at the move, the dynamic move in, in uh, silver copper, which you know we always talk about. Oh yeah, and unbelievable! You know what you've seen, and yet there is nothing to it. You know, yes, for the people who are, are sick, who are dying. Believe me, I'm not making light of that. But that's not what we're talking about. You know, it, you can go read the op-ed pages, but we're talking about this in financial dimensions, and. Uh, it's, it's, it's been very, very interesting. And as I say, uh, if this proceeds to be not as, uh, as serious is the wrong word, if it does, is it proves not to be, have the, uh, impact of even SARS, these things are going to snap back, and that's what you want to be a two to. You're, now you're going to get all kinds of headlines, but I'm warning you, this is early. This is very, very early. And, you know, if you're not an infectious disease person, if you're not a scientist, you know, working on this stuff, 
don't don't try to to read every headline and react with it. Unfortunately, this this action plays right into the hands of the world of uh, social media, you know, and therefore the algos that come with it and the volatility that they're able to create. All of this is in there. So it's, you know, again, you know, I make, I, I laugh about it, but it's, uh, as Hyman Ross said, Michael, this is the world in which we chose to live in. So right. there we live. So. Yeah. I mean, today I was eyeballing this gap in Apple, which was a great yeah. moment right down there. Yeah. And, and, and Microsoft's got the same type of action. And, you know, I, I think that they both, uh, you know, give you some, give you an upside, at least wiggle towards a gap fill on their earnings. Yeah, you know, Apple performed, Apple actually performed so well last week, you know, I, I made light of it. I said, well, the, it looks like the uh, cure for the uh, coronavirus is an Apple Watch. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what can I see? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And everybody, you know, they tried to put Apple away twice on Friday. And the, right. the second time was, uh, you know, it was good for a 25-handle rally. And the spoo yeah. actually 30. Well, I mean, that's why, you know, I can, because that's what it looks like, you know, certain things, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. But I'll tell you what, and yet, where's Vol today? Up to 17 and a half, eight on the uh, 18 and uh, the VIX. You know, it's what still. I know too, and you know, basically told everybody yeah. anything above 1824 was an exit. Yeah, I, and you see it and you go, and so the the world is still discounting any of these things really having an impact, except that they were and went after the stuff where people were starting to build a long position, and that was the commodities. And you go ahead and put up the CRB, go put up the Bloomberg commodity. You can see it so so vividly because that's the problem is that people were really starting to get convic- get a conviction about it. And and a lot of this stuff just went through some really bad levels. I mean, sugar went to the 200 week, spiked it, and totally fell apart. Yeah. Uh, you know, went up to the 50 month moving average, you know, and, and all these commodity spikes have all been to the big averages. Well, and you know what? See, but, it, and this is what the gold tells you. Now, the gold could f- fall apart $20, $25. It should, of course, still be very good, but it just tells you that the banks have locked themselves into so much to supporting financial markets. That anything that causes a uh, a wobble makes them nervous, because what what what's their next? What do they do next? What do they do next? Can we, can we agree that with everything as you see in the world right now, that uh, the Fed will not raise rates this year? Uh, if anything, they're going to be the panic cut. Yeah, that's you know what. <laughs> Really, you know, I, I, I was watching very closely last night because those are, you know, I think had the S&P's been down 5% or the global stock markets, I'm a, I don't even have to talk in terms of the S&P's, but global stock markets, I think you would have seen a move by the Fed last night and the other central banks being very worried. They're just, they've got too much committed to this. Well, that's so hard. That's what I was kind of alluding to last night. Oh. What happens if these guys cut and you don't get any response from the stock market? Oh, yeah. yeah that yeah. is really going to get ugly real fast. Yeah, that's, that's a situation. You know, well, that's what real, you know, the, the global macro people are looking for. They want to see, you know, when we start to get that divergence. And that's why I point to the fact that you have gotten no bounce really here. We're kind of sitting we're kind of sitting, you know, watching, waiting. Uh, but the markets were, were here at, uh, and I'm, I'll speak in central time. But this is where they were last night at 7 o'clock. Yeah, basically. I mean, this is where we are. They, they really not move much. The interest rates were here. They were all here. So I, haven't, I really haven't seen any new movement. They, they got a lot of people out. And a lot of people who panicked and said, hey, 
I'm out of this. I'm buying equity. And I, and I have to tell you, you know, Judd, we're going to go over that and over that and over that. That's that S and P bond. Now, of course, this happened with an event, and the event was the virus. But if you were a seller, you had that spread to be the level where you knew you were wrong. We talked about it last week, 21.18.3. You put it out there, but it was, and we didn't know, you know, what this was going to be with that because the news of uh, the virus was yeah, just creeping out. Nobody knew. Uh, but, well, we were all looking for the trigger. I thought it was going to trigger to the upside. Uh, we both yeah. knew what the downside was. Yeah, no, no. It, and But more importantly, was it as an indicator. Yeah. Hey, whatever way it triggers, it triggers. I don't care. I'm not that smart. But, but I know to be attentive when something rallies and can't make a new high, uh-oh, kind of like silver in 2011-12. Uh, when yeah. they never gold gold was making all time highs by a great and silver never got above the absolute high made in 1980 with the hunts. Yeah, they went up there and double topped, and that was the end of it. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of funny because uh, uh, the other day I was at the morning prayers, and there's a guy named Waltuck there, and my son in law introduced me to him, and I, I said, I said, wait a minute. Are you related to Norton? He said, you know Norton? I said, yeah. He was like the biggest producer of Conti in the 80s. You know, he handled the high. He was huge. Yeah, he did uh, some Sinclair stuff. So I, uh, I knew him. He says, yeah, he's my first cousin. I started laughing. I said, well, that's kind of prescient. And, here, and I have to say this. this is, when I look at the charts, I, and I was looking at it, and you were reminding me, but... Uh, Two years ago, when I was here for my daughter's wedding, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we made that high. We yeah. made the high in late January. You were whining about it. Yeah, we were yeah. Parties and we went straight down. Yep, I said, you know what? We're and here I am, same place again. Doing the uh, this time I'm here for a baby, but it's the same reaction. I go, wait a minute, maybe I should come here every Jan late January. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I should just come here and buy some options of some sort and, and watch the volatility. <laughs> I was laughing with her. She was in the mood to laugh. And the baby was up crying most of the night, hungry and doing what they do. Um, so, I, you know, I, but I, I'm not, the Bank of England, you know, every, there are people out there. So it'll be interesting to watch the pound on Thursday morning. Because if the Bank of England doesn't cut, uh, we should probably get a little some strength in the pound because our people are looking for for the cut. Now, you know, I was wondering whether or not he would he would actually try to say, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna ramp up QE because the Bank of England has not been involved. They they got to 475 billion of uh, balance sheet." But they haven't done anything in years and years. I mean, that was their initial thrust, I think, going back to 2010-11. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure. Um, so I, you know, that's what I'm going to be watching for, to say, well, you know, we see a little softening. We're, so we're going to have some reserves in the system. But I, I'm not looking for them to do anything. There's no reason for them to do anything. Let, let the market start to play out. Let the, let the events start to unfold uh, and start to see how the Brexit is going to uh, actually take place. So uh, still, still a lot of unknowns. Um, and yet you wouldn't know it from the complacency of the market. But I mean, maybe we should. I, I have to applaud that, to tell you the truth. I have to applaud it because it could be a lot worse. Could be a lot worse. And again. We, we've been on hold for uh, 20 hours with a with a trifecta of news out there. Yeah, and the um, what was I looking at? Oh yeah, and the FTSE came right down to the 200 day today on the lows, yeah. right, at the, right at the bottom of the cloud. So it's a good place for a bounce. The question is, does that hold? I mean, it's oversold enough for a bounce. 
Just got to see what it does. And, and Friday was an interesting day because of the, uh, the way that the DAX held. You know, and, and it stayed open. It stays open till 3 o'clock Chicago time, the futures. And it really kind of held in there pretty well, even with the S&Ps getting hammered. But today it took it on the uh, proverbial chin. Yeah, well, it was, a, you know, a few days ago. It was the 22nd when the DAX bun blew off. And that, that was that yeah. Wednesday. And then right. you had right. to follow through and then the retest of half of the bar. And then it just, ugh. So. Yeah. All right, that's my my short and sweet. I, you know my, you know you can trade some of these headlines if you want, but but know that there's a lot of science to this, and yet there's just a lot of sensationalism in the headlines. So I'm I'm being very careful here, very well, very careful. Matt's just been on totally, you know, opening range breakout and forgetting about it, and man, yeah, okay, and and the and the 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 room has been, you know, just knocking him dead the last couple of days off of it. Yeah, good. Because you know what? Now, you know, it's a pit trader's delight. So the, the world is just one giant pit. Not bad. So, all right. Well, good. Thanks for, uh, okay. All right. Bye-bye.